G'day my friends, Marty Wee here from Marty's Garden with my good friend. Come here down here Pete, in the shade mate, get out of that hot sun. Hermie hey. Pete. How's he's, it going? He's here, he's dropped off some worms for me for the new farm here. And uh, yeah, if you haven't seen the first video about worm farming expert here, I'm going to leave a link above uh, teaching all about worm farming. But today he's got something special for me. How many worms you got for me, mate? So we've got uh, approximately about 12,000 uh, worms, and uh, they're red wigglers, uh, Indian blues, and there's even some uh, African night crawlers getting through the mix now. Sweet. Well, let's go over and get them out of the car, and we'll bring them down to where I've got something set up to put them in there, just for now. Absolutely. All right, let's go. Ooh, look at this. Hey, man, all these boxes in here, where are they going? Uh, well, I've already been delivering today to a few of the bunnings up and down the, the north coast, mid-north coast. Yeah, awesome. Yep, and uh, these are the ones, these are the special packages for you. Oh, so let's, there's let's, six. How many? 6,000 in each, in each bag. Wow. Can you empty them out for me into here and I'm just going to film and we'll give everyone a look at what 6,000 worms look like of a different species. Alright, so... We can maybe as talk, you can see, them talk about them a bit. We just transport them in these breathable bags and uh, we put some material in there. We try and keep it uh, a little bit dry so that the worms are, are happy in transportation. So we'll tip some of it out and we'll see they should be all clumped up in the middle. There we go. What's the uh, bedding material there in, Pete? So this is a uh, mixture of coconut coir and a little bit of peat moss. Okay. We found that the, uh, the two together uh, are the perfect mix. So we obviously put a, a fair bit of material in just to keep the worms happy and, and this is the bedding material that they'll start laying their eggs and stuff in. So there's, uh, they're just all through this material which is, uh, you can see that uh, it's, there's you know, a fair bit of moisture in the middle and then it's nice and dry on the outside so what this will require now Marty is it will require just a, a quick little sprinkle of uh, some water from a watering can. Don't go too crazy but uh, you just want to make sure that the material has is, is got a, a light saturation. Okay. Excellent. So there's, what, what varieties have we got in here? I know you so, said before. But... <clears throat> well here's a, here's a clump and you can see the, uh, the, the red, there's reds, so there's some breeding ones in there. There's a lot of juveniles as well. How can uh, you tell the difference between a juvenile and a breeding one? Well, if it doesn't have a clitellum, so this one here. What's the clitellum? So Just it's, so it's, people know. It's its reproductive organ, it's the little, the little band that the worm has. Uh, it looks like a little swollen part of it. Normally it's up in the uh, about a third of the head. Yeah, yeah. So on the Indian blues, uh, you can see that there, there's, there's the band there that's right. So it's actually an inverted if you if you look closely. Oh, where, wow, is it? Yeah, whereas this one here is... Uh, I learned something every day. I didn't know yeah. that. I thought well, that's, they were flat. Yeah, well, it's actually the, the, uh, the only way you can tell a true Indian blue is uh, by looking at the, the kind of the little indentation on where the clitellum is. So Excellent. it's only very slight, but uh, if you look closely, you'll be able to see it. Cool. So it's uh, it's obviously a bit hard to see them when they're still in all that material. Mm. And as you can see, you know, the, uh, you know, we, we thought because we're introducing them into your windrow system, that having a lot of juveniles in there growing up in the material uh, will be the best thing for, for your system, Marty, because that way uh, the juveniles will find their, their happy place and they're the most voracious eaters out of all of them. Okay. Whereas the big ones, well, they'll probably end up going and, and uh, laying some eggs through the rest of your material. Yep. But obviously the little ones, they're full time eating at the moment. Yeah, awesome. We've got another bag, so maybe we can yes. empty that one out into here. I've got a this aged mushroom compost, if anyone's wondering what it is. Makes a very good compost bedding, uh, worm bedding, so to speak and mixing it with the permi peat mixture. I think they're gonna be very happy. I'll just wet it down a bit more, like you said. Got some noise from the trucks yeah. here in the background, but never mind. 
look at that. So yeah, you can see like, uh, wow. you know, there's, there's some bigger worms in there. The African night crawlers probably uh, aren't at the, the full size to actually uh, tell the difference between the worms yet. But as I said, they look know, like this, reds, don't they? When they do, when that's right, young. mate. Yep, they they look very similar to the reds when they're young. Um, but it won't take them long, especially on your special mix, um, because I, I can tell just looking at the material that those worms are going to love your special blend, mate. Yeah, they're going to fatten up pretty quick. They will. They certainly with all that space you got there for them. So yeah, be very interested to see how this comes along in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I think by the middle of autumn, um, you know, I should have triple the numbers. They should breed up pretty quick. Yeah, oh, absolutely, yeah. Because, you know, that's kind of the whole point of, of having the breeders in there so that uh, you can get the, the start on the egg laying, but then you've got all the uh, smaller worms that once they get to uh, sexual maturity, uh, they're just going to just lay eggs for the next couple of years. Mm. If people are going to buy, like, bulk worms like, like I've done today, just to restock up what advice would you give them uh well i mean in in terms of uh you know buying bulk worms uh i, I think the uh about the four thousand worms is kind of really the the happy point to to re get your worm farm going again um but as, as long as you've got the compost uh if you've already got a you know a worm farm that just needs redoing then yeah a uh, four thousand or or a kilo is probably as much as you need but uh, if you want to go on to anything bigger then uh, you'd be looking at you know kind of two to two to five kilos uh, will we'll really get your composting fast yeah and so on average how many in a kilo on average I know it varies but yeah it can vary from 4,000 to 6,000 worms just depending on you know the size of the worm normally it's the breeders that are about uh, 3,000 to 4,000 worms per kilo uh, and then the juveniles, obviously, because they're a lot smaller, uh, they, they'll go from anywhere from 4,000 up to 8,000. Yeah, awesome. So thanks for coming out to uh, my composting site here. No worries, Really mate. appreciate it, Pete. Um, and I've got a heap of worms to work with, so we'll keep everyone updated. And hopefully you'll come back in the near future and Absolutely. We'll have, have a, look. a look at it and we'll go through the material and see how it's all going. Yeah, as you're doing your runs, you might drop in again, huh? Yeah, absolutely. All right, awesome. Okay, well, thanks, bro. Good to and, see you, uh, man. Much appreciated. We should be really doing one of those knuckle things, shouldn't we? <laughs> <laughs> good on you, man. See ya. See ya. Say good day to the family for me. Will do, mate.